In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will learn about the magnetic effect of electric current, right hand rule, cock screw rule for a straight conductor, right hand rule and end rule for a solenoid, magnetic leakage, fringing, series and parallel magnetic circuits. Let's start with the magnetic effect of electric current. When a conductor or a coil carries a current, it produces the magnetic flux around it and starts behaving as a magnet. Such a current carrying coil is called as an electromagnet and the phenomenon is called as the magnetic effect of electric current. When we consider a straight conductor, the direction of the magnetic flux lines is given by the right hand rule. It states that hold the current carrying conductor in the right hand such that the thumb points in the direction of the current and is parallel to the conductor. Then, curled fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field or flux around it. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. The direction of the rotation of the flux is also determined by the corkscrew rule. Consider a current carrying conductor and a screw. Assume the axis of the screw is parallel to the conductor and the tip of the screw is pointing in the direction of the current. Then, the direction of the magnetic field is determined by the direction in which the screw must be turned so as to advance in the direction of the current. If the screw rotates in the clockwise direction, then the direction of the current through a conductor will be from top to bottom. And if the screw rotates in the anti-clockwise direction, the current flows from bottom to top. The term solenoid refers to a long, thin loop of wire often wrapped around a metallic core. The element around which the coil is bound is called as the core of the solenoid. The use of a magnetic material as a core becomes an added advantage. When the current flows through the coil, it produces the flux. Also, the core being magnetic produces its own flux. These two fluxes being in the same direction build the strong magnetic field. The direction of the current and the magnetic field is given by the right hand rule again. It states that hold the solenoid in the right hand such that curled fingers point in the direction of the current through the coil. Then the outstretched thumb along the axis of the solenoid points to the north pole of the solenoid or points in the direction of the flux lines inside the solenoid. If the solenoid is observed from any one end, then its polarity can be decided by nothing but the direction of the current. If seen from end A, the current flows in the clockwise direction. So, end A behaves as the south pole. If seen from end B, the current flows in the anti-clockwise direction. So, end B acts as a north pole. The magnetic field strength of a solenoid is given as H equals N into I upon L where N equals number of turns of a coil, I current through the solenoid and L length of the conductor. A solenoid of 150 centimeters is wound on a brass tube. If the current through the coil is 0 0.85 amperes, calculate the number of turns necessary over the solenoid to produce the field strength of 400 ampere turns per meter at the center of the coil. We have length L equals 150 centimeters, current I equals 0 0.85 amperes and field strength H equals 400 amperes turns per meter. We need to find the number of turns N. For that, we use formula H equals N into I upon L. The magnetic field strength is given by the formula H equals N into I upon L. Substituting the values, we get the value of N as N approximately equals 705 turns. Hence, 705 turns are necessary over the solenoid to produce the field strength of 400 ampere turns per meter at the center of the coil. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Let's study the concept of magnetic leakage and fringing. It is expected that whenever the flux is produced by the magnetizing coil, it should complete its path through the air gap. But practically, all the flux never appears across 
the air gap as some of the flux completes its path through the medium in which the coil and the magnetic circuit is placed. This is called as leakage flux. The leakage coefficient lambda is given as the ratio of total flux to the useful flux. Ideally, its value should always be 1, but practically it's always greater than 1. When the flux enters into the air gap, it passes through the air gap in terms of parallel flux lines. There exists a force of repulsion between the magnetic lines of force, which are parallel and having same direction. Due to this repulsive force, there is a tendency of a magnetic flux to bulge out at the edge of the air gap. This tendency of magnetic flux to bulge out at the edges of their gap is called as magnetic fringing. Magnetic leakage and fringing increases the effective cross-sectional area of the air gap and reduces the flux density in the air gap. Thus, both should be as low as possible. Similar to electric circuits, we have magnetic circuits too. It can be defined as the closed path traced by the magnetic lines of force that is flux. Consider the magnetic circuit consisting of an iron core with cross-sectional area a meter square and mean length l meters. A coil of n turns is wound on one of the sides of the square core which is excited by the supply. This supply drives the current I into the coil and the coil produces the flux phi. The magnetic field strength is given by H and the flux density is given by B. The total flux in the core is phi. Hence phi can be calculated as the product of flux density and the cross-sectional area. Thus, substituting the values, we get phi as the ratio of mmf to the reluctance. This is similar to the expression of the current for electric circuit. Magnetic circuits are classified into two broad categories, series magnetic circuits and parallel magnetic circuits. Consider the ring made up of three different materials having lens L1, L2 and L3 and having three different cross-sectional areas A1, A2 and A3 respectively with absolute permeabilities mu1, mu2 and mu3. Let the coil wound on a ring has n turns and carries current I. Thus, total EMF equals n into I. This will set the flux phi, which is the same through all the three elements in the circuit. This is similar to three resistance connected in series across the common supply. We define reluctance as the opposition to the flux as resistance is the opposition to the current. Thus, similar to the equivalent resistance, the equivalent reluctance is calculated as S total equals S1 plus S2 plus S3 but S equals L upon mu into A. Total flux equals MMF upon total reluctance or MMF equals total reluctance into total flux. On solving the expression, we get the total MMF as the sum of individual MMFs. Hence, for a series magnetic circuit, the magnetic flux through all the parts is the same. Equivalent reluctance is the sum of individual reluctances and the resultant MMF necessary is the sum of individual MMFs. In parallel electrical circuit, the current through every resistance is different. Similar to this, we can construct the parallel magnetic circuits. At point A, the total flux phi splits into phi 1, phi 2 and follows the different paths as A, B, C, D, A and A, F, E, D, A respectively. The total flux generated is given by flux equals MMF upon reluctance. Thus, MMF equals flux into reluctance. But MMF is also given as N into I. Thus, for path ABCDA, MMF equals phi 1 into S1 plus phi into SC. And for path AFEDA, MMF equals phi 2 into S2 plus phi into SC. 
The total MMF generated in the parallel circuit is given by the equation shown. As the EMF across parallel components of electric circuit is the same, the MMF in a parallel magnetic circuit is also same. An iron ring 8 cm mean diameter is made up of round iron of diameter 2 cm and permeability of 800 has an air gap of 3 mm wide. It consists of winding of 400 turns carrying a current of 4 amperes. Determine MMF total reluctance, flux and flux density in the ring. We have the diameter of the ring equals D equals 8 centimeters. Length of air gap equals LG equals 3 millimeters. Number of turns equals 400. Current I equals 4 amperes and relative permeability equals 800. We need to find four terms as MMF, total reluctance, flux and the flux density in the ring. For that, we use four different formulae as shown. The length of the iron is calculated as the diameter minus length of the air gap and equals 0.2483 meters. The area of cross section is calculated as A equals pi by 4 into D square, where D equals diameter of the iron. It gives the value of 3.14 into 10 raised to minus 4 meters square. The area of cross section and the area of air gap is assumed to be same. The total EMF produced equals N into I, which gives the value 1600 ampere turns per meter. The total reluctance is given as S total equals SI plus SG. SI and SG are calculated using standard formulae and gives the values as shown. Substituting the values, we get the value of total reluctance as 8.389 into 10 raised to 6 ampere turns per meter. The flux is calculated as ratio of MMF to the reluctance and gives the value of 190.71 into 10 raised to minus 6 Webers. The last term we find is flux density as the flux generated in the given area. We get the flux density as B equals 0 0.6073 Webers per meter square. Let's have a quick review now. The magnetic effect of an electric current is explained by right hand rule in which the thumb denotes the direction of the current and the curled fingers denote the direction of the flux. It's also given by the cock screw rule, in which the rotation of the screw determines the direction of the flux. A solenoid is a long, thin loop of wire, often wrapped around a metallic core, which produces a magnetic field when an electric current is passed through it. The direction of the current through the solenoid is determined by the right hand rule and the poles of the solenoid are determined by the end rule. It is expected that the total flux produced should appear across the air gap, but practically some part of the flux completes its path through the medium in which the coil and magnetic circuit is placed. This phenomenon is called as magnetic leakage. Leakage coefficient is given by symbol lambda. The tendency of magnetic flux to bulge out at the edges of the air gap is called as magnetic fringing. Similar to electric circuits, the magnetic circuits can also be divided into two categories as series circuits and parallel circuits.